So in this episode, I'm going to share with you guys some essential skills and insights that will quickly transform the way you approach your photography. So this is Jiggy. I'm a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So the first thing that I want to share with you guys is the fact that no one has a right to tell you that your photograph is ugly. The only person that can say that is yourself. I say that for a few reasons. The first, most of you guys are hobbyist photographers who got into photography for different reasons, but I'm pretty sure if you guys have a family, that is the reason on why you did. You want to take pictures of your loved ones, your kids, your wife, your mom, your dad, or whoever it is that you want to document as part of your life. And that is what photography is all about to begin with, right? It is a documentation of someone's life, whether you're in wedding or you're in events or, or doing or different genres of photography. It is all about documentation. So here I am telling you guys that even if you're beginners, so long as you've created or captured a moment in time that is actually very essential for you, I cannot tell you that that photograph is ugly, whether it be underexposed, whether it be blurry, whether it be this and that. Because we live now in a, in a society filled with Facebook and Instagram that everybody would just post, thing, post things just to be able to get some likes. And for me, that is the wrong way of approaching things because that image may not be technically perfect or it may not appeal to, that, to everyone. But so long as it appeals to you and it, it preserves that memory of maybe your first child um, laughing or your first hug your first mother and daughter hug or the first time your son hugged, your, hugged you and somebody was able to take a photograph. And that's what photography is all about. But if you want to take this genre or this hobby seriously, you also have to be hard on yourself. You ask yourself, what is wrong with this photograph that I've taken? Even I, I've been shooting for about 12 years already. Every time I see an image, I look at, my, I look at it and I ask myself, how could I make this better? Or what did I do wrong for this? Should I, post, should I have posted her this way? Should I have waited for her to smile this way? Or things like that. So it's up to me to actually tell myself, okay, I still need to improve more and make that photograph better. So in, that's why I'm telling you guys that no one, don't believe anyone if that person tells you that that photograph is ugly. But believe it yourself if you think that that photograph can still be improved. Next. Second one, there are two types of photographers for me. One is a documentary photographer and another one is a pictorialist. When I say a documentary photographer, a documentary photographer just sees something, clicks the shutter and documents exactly what happened there. Nothing wrong with that. You've got photojournalists doing that. Amazing, amazing work. Nothing can be posted, nothing can be repeated, but it takes a special skill for you to be able to do that also. But for me, I consider myself a pictorialist. A pictorialist, what, differs, what I believe differs that to a documentary photographer is that I like placing people in certain situations that I can control. As a documentary photographer, you cannot control everything. As a pictorialist, I like to control everything, including my light, my posing, the emotions that I will get for that specific image. So you have to now you have to define whether or not you want to be a portrait a, a pictorialist or a documentary photographer, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be one of one or the other. Because in my industry, as I said, I'm a wedding photographer. I am also a documentary photographer because there are times that I cannot control anything. All I have to do is document the event and I want to be able to do that in the best possible way. So I mix some of the skills as a pictorialist to being a documentary photographer. So what are these skills? Being able to control the light, being able to control the mood, being able to control the situation in which you're gonna be in, but to a certain degree only. Next, so being a pictorialist, the third one now is you have to learn how to create photographs and not just take them. So even though we are living in the world of digital that memory cards are so cheap and so many, we could take so many images instantaneously, you've got cameras shooting at 10 frames per second, the Sony shoot at 20 frames per second, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should, unless of course, maybe you are a sports photographer and you need that. But for me as a wedding photographer or a pictorialist, I actually want to be able to create my images and not just take them. 
So I like creating my own images. I like bringing my own light. I like manipulating light, whether it be ambient or, or the flash that I brought. I like manipulating the poses. The emotions, I don't like manipulating. The emotions, let's say, for example, when I'm, in, when I'm shooting a bride, let's say, during the wedding and during the bridal preps, what I would do is I would put, let's say, the mother and the daughter, the bride, in a certain light, in a certain position in which I know she has the best angle and the light is hitting them properly, then I step back. Then that's when I try to create the mood. Sometimes we even play some music just for them to be able to express how they feel during that moment. So in that case, I would say, ma'am, do you have anything to say for your daughter? Maybe some parting words before she gets married. So if you're able to create that mood, all of a sudden you'll see that they will have that connection and just start um, letting go of real emotions. So it's not something that I faked because the emotions are real. I put them in a situation in which I could capture them in good light, good composition, but the emotions are real. So that is what I mean about learning how to create your own photographs and not just take them. Because if you have to wait for those moments to happen, and in case you miss it, then you, you're gone, that's it. But if you're able to create and manipulate the, those types of situation, that could elevate your photography. Now, that of course is for the wedding industry. But if you're doing it, let's say for example, when you're doing fashion, you're creating your own images by your own concepts, by your own, um, by the styling that's done, by the light that you're creating, the location that you choose. So everything is not just about, hey, this is it, take a shot, that's it. That's why personally, I've never believed that open shoots or pictures from open shoots, when somebody else does the lighting, the posing and everything else, and all you do is click a shutter, should be a part of your portfolio. So learn how to create photographs and not just take them. So next, you've learned how to create photographs and not just take them. But in order for you to do that, you have to see and understand the light. What do I mean by seeing and understanding the light? As I said earlier, by being a pictorialist, I actually tend to look at situations and analyze why that, why that particular scene is beautiful, which now ties up to what I'm saying that you have to be able to see and understand the light. Because photography to begin with is all about light. There is no photography if you don't have light. There is no beautiful photograph if you don't have beautiful light. So when you learn how to see and understand the light, you will then know how to be able to manipulate that light in order for you to get the mood or the emotion or the type of light that you want to be able to get in terms of the image that you want to create. So if you notice everything that I've been saying so far ties in to be able to create an image that you can actually be proud of. So in order for me to see and understand the light, you have to go around with this concept in mind. Every time you see a beautiful scene, you ask yourself then, what makes this scene beautiful? You ask it, is it the way the light is hitting this particular object? Or is it the way the light is peeping through this window? Or is it because of how vibrant the colors are? The, vibrant, the vibrance of colors, remember, is brought about by good light. So with those, those things, all you have to do is put it in your head and try to remember all these things that you are seeing. So that whenever you're put in a situation in which you have to create something, the first thing that goes through my head is not how beautiful the location is or how beautiful the background would be or how beautiful this wall would be, but rather I would ask myself, where is the light beautiful? So I would go around that place and look for where beautiful light is. Now, if I can't find it or if it's in a situation like for us here in the Philippines, we don't get beautiful light all the time. It's like 90% of the time we have to be able to make do with what we have. But for me, I don't like doing that. That's why I always bring around a lot of lights, whether it be continuous or strobes. So then I go back to the things that I've seen before. Let's say I see a particular wall or I see a particular staircase. And immediately I remember, hey, I was walking before and I saw this light was shining through here or light was shining through there. Maybe I could replicate that and create that image here. So that's why it's always essential for you to be able to see and understand, meaning you see where it's coming from, you see what it's doing, 
understand why it is doing that, whether it's soft light, harsh light, the direction of the light, the quality, the, the quality of the light or the strength of the light, everything, all those technical aspects of light, which you will be able to find in some of my videos, maybe in the future or some of the videos I've already done, in terms of how to be able to see the quality and be able to create those types of light. So see and understand the light and definitely you can never tell yourself, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get a good image because the location wasn't good. Because you have to remember, any location with beautiful light will always be beautiful. Next, your photographs are a representation of who you are. Meaning that if you are taking photographs, make sure that whatever it is that you are taking is you. Because there's always gonna be a major question or a big debate about style about people copying each other's styles or all these filters for that matter, just getting filters and just doing all those things with unnatural colors and everything. It's fine, do whatever it is that you want to do when it comes to that. But if you want to listen to my insights, I am telling you the best photographs that you will be able to create are those photographs that represent who you are, meaning it's your personal taste. I believe that the way you take your photographs is a representation of how you are as a person. Let's say, for example, my personal style is really who I am, meaning I really like classic images. I don't like too many posy images, especially for weddings. I don't like doing a lot of those model poses for, not, for normal people. I'd rather keep it as simple as possible, as classic as possible, and as timeless as possible. And at the same time, I see some images that I like. I'm, I'd be like, wow, this image is beautiful, this image is so artistically done, I love it, it's perfect, I, I really do like it. But as much as I would want to emulate it, I don't even try to because that's not who I am, okay? And I know I will not be able to do it as well as that person doing it. So if you were to copy a particular style of a person, it has to be a style that you are in love with because it, the photographs that you are taking, again, is going to be a representation of who you are. Okay, the next insight that I want to share with you guys is something that's a bit controversial because it is about gear. And you know that there's always gonna be a debate of Indian versus Pana, which I don't want to get into now, but eventually you guys will see my stand when it comes to that. So what I'm gonna tell you guys is master the gear you have. By mastering the gear you have, it's essential that you know exactly what your camera can do. So with me, I use a Sony. I use the Sony A7R Mark III and the Sony A7R Mark IV, which gives me amazing details and amazing high ISO. So why do I say master the gear you have? Because I started off with so many Sony cameras and I fell in love with the A7R because it gave me exactly what I needed. It gave me the resolution that I wanted, it gave me the ISO that I wanted, it gave me the focusing that I wanted. It's basically everything that I wanted in the camera. Because again, when you have your camera, it's just going to be an extension of you. It is your vision to be able to create all those images. Your camera is just your paintbrush. But if you have the camera that's capable of doing everything that you want, then you're able to create the image that you envision. Okay? So it's as simple as this. 10 years ago, ISO was horrible. You couldn't even go up to ISO 1600 without, without having so much noise. But now ISO 1600 is insignificant, 3200, 6400, easy. So what happened then? It opened up a whole new light for me when it came to shooting at night or shooting with ambient light or shooting with um, a mixture of both ambient light and flash. There are times that I would actually shoot at ISO 12800 just to bring in everything and pop a little bit of flash here and there or maybe add a continuous light. So it opened up so many possibilities for me. That is because I knew exactly what my camera was capable of, capable of doing. So if I knew that my camera was not capable of that high ISO, I won't even bother trying to shoot that image or maybe I'll have to put in more lights. So that's why you have to master the gear you have. Let's say some of the images that you saw earlier, I probably shot those underexposed, um, killed all the shadows, because knowing that my camera's dynamic range, I could just pull all those shadows in post. But then if you knew your camera couldn't do that, then you might have to adjust your shooting style. So that's why it is essential that you master the gear you have 
so that you know its pros and you know its cons and you work around everything, okay? Okay, last but not the least, I am a problem solver and not a complainer. So what do I mean by that? Think about it. There are so many times you would tell yourself, okay, I'll ask my assistant photographer, how come you weren't able to get this image? And that person will always have an excuse, whether or not the light was good, the location wasn't good, the model wasn't good, they weren't cooperating. You have so many excuses and you complain about those excuses instead of just solving the problem. I'll give you a, I'll give you a very, a perfect example. It's raining. Okay, you're in, a, in an, you're in an engagement shoot and it's raining. I'll show you a picture right now. This particular image, or I'll put a link below on how I solved this particular problem for this, for this image. But to give you the gist of that, it was raining. Basically, we couldn't shoot anymore if it was raining, right? It was, it was an engagement shoot for them. But instead of complaining about the fact that it was raining, we decided to use the rain as part of our to part as part of our scene. So we were able to light the light the couple, we were able to bring out the droplets of rain, we were able to integrate everything in this particular image that I'm showing you now. Now, again, these are just one of the instances in which you have to be able to solve a problem instead of complaining about it, because trust me, after you're done with the shoot and you did not solve it and you started complaining about it afterwards, you will have a harder time trying to explain to your clients on why you weren't able to get those specific images that they hired you for, okay? So it is actually easier to even to just solve the problem instead of complaining about it, okay? I'll give you instances. What are the normal problems that you would incur during a shoot? One, maybe location. You don't have a beautiful location. So what do you do if you don't have a beautiful location? Shoot tight. Make it all about the couple. Take the location out. That's number one. I don't, have I don't have nice light. That's why you have artificial light. That's why you have flash, you have continuous light. You can always have nice light in your bag. And if you wanna see what I carry around whenever I'm shooting, again, I will post a link below on what's inside my lighting bag. Number three, um, the couple are not cooperating. They're probably not cooperating only because they are a little bit on the edge because it's the first time they're, they're gonna be shot. They're not comfortable in front of the camera. That's the whole, uh, and if they're not comfortable in front of the camera, it is your job to make them feel comfortable. How do you do that? You talk to them, you explain to them what's gonna be happening. You make them feel comfortable in front of the camera. Trust in your skills, take one good shot of them, show it to them, after you show it to them, I'm sure they're gonna be so comfortable afterwards, the moment you take that one good shot of them. So make sure that you get it in the first five takes or else that's gonna be a bigger problem. Then what else? Or if it's raining, I just gave you an example on how you solve rain. It's too dark. Again, master the gear you have. You have cameras now that can actually shoot in the dark, so it's no longer a problem. What else? We're not allowed to shoot there? Well, if you're not allowed to shoot there, don't break the law and don't shoot there. So shoot somewhere else in which you're gonna be allowed to shoot in. What else? Um, you know what? Post, your, uh, post the problems you normally encounter in the comments below and let's see, we'll work on it together and we could find a solution for that. Because as I said, it is so much easier to solve the problem rather than complain, after, uh, complain about it afterwards because you can't do anything anymore if the shoot is done. I hope you guys enjoyed that non-technical photography tutorial. So I'll sum it all up again. The first is, no one can tell you that your photograph is ugly. The only person who can say that is yourself. There are two types of photographers, a documentarist or a pictorialist. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to be one or the other. You can always be both. Third is learn how to create your own photographs and not just take them. Fourth, see and, see and understand the light. The fifth one is master the gear you have. And last but not the least, don't be a, always be a problem solver and not be a complainer. Okay, so why is all these things very, very important to me? Because I seriously believe, as I stated earlier, that 10% of your photography is the technical and clicking the shutter. 9% is all about your approach or your psyche on how you see things. Okay, so that's why I always start most of my workshops this way, explaining all these things, 
because then by doing that you see things you should be able to see things in a different light that it's not just about how many pictures you take but how much understanding and thought and knowledge you put into creating your own image that should elevate your photography so I hope you liked that video and uh, if you did, please like, share and subscribe to this channel and if you could click that bell so that every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified and till the next video.